part two. I'm letting myself be a little more uh, production about this, I guess. It's Monday today, the 15th. I have work off today. I would like to finish this. According to my contract with myself, my Ulysses contract that says if I don't finish this by January 21st, insert consequence here. We have a bunch of things. So blocks have to fall and connect, that's done. Lines have to clear, that's done. Points increase, that's clear. If you haven't seen my last devlog, you can go check it out. You can pause, start, etc. Not incorporated yet, the main menu. I think that's gonna be the brunt of my work today. The game does not currently speed up over time and it does not end when the blocks get too high. There's like a place, uh, just print end game, but it doesn't like reset to the menu or anything, so. Uh, and then the soundtrack, um, I'm just gonna get some Korbaniki sheet music, see if I can <clears throat> teach myself like, I don't know, 30 seconds of it today. I was watching some Dev Duck videos this morning and I felt uh, inspired to make this a bit more of a produced devlog. Not too much effort because I don't want the video to take away from the time I can spend on Tetris itself. My goal with this project is just doing work. <laughs> Let's go figure out how to make a freaking menu in Godot, I guess. The game pauses and there's a start menu as you can see. I couldn't figure out how to change the text size, but um, I'm kind of speed running, not speed running, finishing the end. I have my git diff just to show what I did on the code side. Um, so as far as Godot goes, I made a, a paused text. How do you align this vertically? I don't know. The pause menu? Uh, I was gonna make it a new scene originally, so I just took a screenshot instead of rendering the background, but we can actually just get rid of this. Um, we'll make it invisible. Vertical box, some buttons uh, that trigger some actions in the script, um, in a new script, I should say. The, we can just hop in to this actual, oh, wow, this changed live. That's kind of cool. So we'll put the image back. <laughs> This just populates dynamically with all the different uh, following speeds you can have. I just wanted one setting. It's kind of cool because just having a really simple menu just makes some, makes it feel a little more complete, I guess you could say. Uh, anyway, start the game. Um, game starts, you hit escape. There's this incredibly <laughs> obtrusive text. I think this is how you'd pause the game in general, I want to say. Now that we ready up, we're setting the text to just be invisible for now, but we have a variable, a boolean, true, false. It just says if pause, then we're gonna return. We're not gonna process anything. We're not gonna increase the frame counter. We're not gonna do anything. I don't wanna change the frame counter to zero because then people could just keep pausing if you can, you know, if you can time it well enough. I have no countdown. I just kind of yeeted that task because I don't feel like it at the moment. Pause flips pause. Visibility on the pause text, you know, flips that. Um, if we do pause, we just clear the frozen blocks and we clear all the moving block children, uh, which is why everything's disappearing. And then when we unpause, we redraw the game grid and we redraw the moving block. If I go ahead and restart, change this to 16, uh, we see they're falling faster, which is wonderful. You love to see it. Escape, game paused, escape. Like, the purple block should not move down, right? Boom, it didn't, what do you know? And we can see that our grid is still pretty printing uh, on the bottom here when things are good. And when we redraw the grid, we see it happens because we re when we redraw, we reprint the console. So the only thing now is I kind of like having multiple windows. I don't know why having the background too. Anyway, the game ends. I, uh, I'm going to go play some piano and then I just need to fix this rotation bug. I know how I'm going to do it. Block rotates. It should go all the way over as far as it can go when it rotates. I feel like that behavior makes sense. And then we're good. I may forego my run for an evening run because I think I can really finish this today. There comes the first part. It's just the, the fingers are the order. I think I'm, I think I'm almost there with just this first part. And I think I'm just gonna repeat the first page. Brighten me, not not this. Ignore the, ignore this camera. D with my right thumb. It's so annoying. It's the fifths, too. My hands are here, and then the finger moves slightly by the time I get to the next fifth. So it happens when you don't play for six years, I guess. Take a break. 
<laughs> so annoying. Okay, so I recorded a really basic track from the piano. The aux cord that I went out to buy today has a mic on it. So if I try to use my audio splitter, it defaults to using the mic. Why there's a mic on the aux cord, I don't know. I have to play, listen to myself playing through Audacity, which is a miserable experience. But here's one something that I can throw in here that I can just replace later. <laughs> Oh, I don't even restart. Okay. Oh, starting in the... Honestly, it's kind of funny to just use a really bad version of this. Oh my god, it comes in today. Does it have a mic? I didn't think this was a thing on aux cables. No, no mic, thank god. The delay was really annoying to work with because I use, I listen to feedback uh, as I play piano, but it's so slow because I'm waiting to hear myself before I move on to the next note. Like it's, ugh, you can hear me waiting for it, you know? And there's absolutely no dynamics. So let's go ahead and export this and see what happens in Godot. Um, I did try and add a music enabled thing here, but uh, it looks like you can't at least easily get things from other, like return values from other scenes. Like I, I think it's something, it's an organizational thing, like something to research more later if I come across it. Internet sucks today. Start game, nice music and little bloop, bloop, bloop. I think I would like a, a harder sound, but this uh, suffices for now. And if I... Yeah, cool. The, the music stops when we see him. Alright, I've cheesed a little bit of things. It's pretty much it. So I'll go over what I did in just a moment. Tweak the following speed. The game ends um, and the game's gonna speed up for every 10 line clears. There's an ending game UI again. It's pretty shoddy. I'm not necessarily proud of what I've done exactly, <laughs> as we can see. So I made a score label, or speed label, sorry, that just does the same thing as a score to show the current speed. When it updates, we're getting the parent, which is the UI, and then we're getting the parent of that, which is main. Um, this is kind of a similar issue to what I was having with uh, whatever I was messing with earlier that I gave up on. And I'll have to look more into this because I do not like what I did here. But pretty much uh, when you, emit a signal you call this emit function and i, I kind of wish you could return a value i can't return a value on that signal and get the signal in another scene so you'd have to make it a child and you'd have to work your way up i guess not the most proud of that we have another is playing variable literally just set the things manually <laughs> final sprint i don't care i moved everything into a start game function we have an end game function that does you know the opposite of things now if we're not playing or we're paused then we do nothing and then also uh worth noting in the moving block controller. This feels like all I really wanted to do, but it's just an early return if the game hasn't even started. And then you can still pause and unpause. And if it's paused, early return here. So if I click on this button here, and then I click start game, it's a functional version of Tetris. Um, the rotations are still broken, as you can see here, but I don't like really care. It's hard to find the care because like, like, you know, I want to move on kind of. Uh, there's a blog post I came across today that's all about um, you should you know make a bunch of small games, not your big dream project right away. And I you know I agree with that. I think making your dream project right off the bat's fine as long as you're not a perfectionist. So as you can see, I cleared three lines, but I got 40 points because of the multiplier, or I think I did at least. I hope I did. But this was a really good way to go because I know Tetris, and. This is kind of what it feels like. The rotation might be a little different, it depends, but you know, there's no wall kicks here. If I rotate it, I can probably rotate this into other block, yeah. So in general, maybe I'll do a simple wall kick thing to fix that. If you're rotating and there's a block, you, you do the rotation, but then you just move it up so that it collides or move it to the left or right so that it, or sorry, doesn't collide specifically. Speed will change to 14. Um, not that it really changes much, wow, that sucks. One thing I wish I could do is, you know, press and hold. Um, that would be kind of nice. Another thing, you know, I have some quality of life improvements that I put on the Trello board, which would just be kind of nice to have, like if I was making this as an actual game, so to speak, but it has served its purpose. And now I want to move on to a slightly bigger project, a little one chamber stuff, another, another small project to learn some practices, good and bad kind of have to you know deal with the nightmare that is networking but that will come later someone who plays a lot of tetris i guess it's kind of like i this is playable 
it's not like it's too far off from the mark, so to speak, from the game that I set out to, to recreate, if you will. Oh, I should have put that to the left. I meant to, but I'm far distracted. Ah, this is unfortunate. What was I saying about being a good Tetris player? Anyway, game over. Score 85. Retry. Will I get on this one? There it is. Speed increased to 15. Yay, and it is moving a little faster. So, fully playable version of Tetris, effectively. But that is it. I see you've made it to the end of the devlog. Well, <laughs> I've made it to the end of a devlog, making something for the first time ever. Take a second, grab some water, hydrate. Um, an in-depth code review would take too much time, I think, but hopefully the code I've jumped into in this video has been sufficient. If you're curious, the GitHub link is in the description. The first thing is that just getting this project done is huge. Effectively, I had two mentalities going in, and one was less planning. This is what less planning looks like to me. Simple Trello board, simple labels, just throw stuff on there and just go. The second mentality that I went in with was focusing on input, not output. Focus on getting X hours of this Tetris devlog done this week. Don't focus on, you know, finishing the whole thing. Goals in general are directions to go in. And so when I made my little contract for myself, finish this game by the 21st of January, finish it the 15th, a deadline that I needed in a way. The consequence was very superficial. It just, I couldn't order food from DoorDash, which I did maybe once or twice a week. It was a focus on just put in time. It's done. It's just done. I've always wanted to make games, and that's this is a lot I'm considering this is my first game, a Tetris clone. Another reflection is that, yeah, it's not great. The blocks can rotate into each other. I didn't incorporate all the fancy wall kick stuff. My goal here was not to remake Tetris perfect. This imperfection goal is something I'm going to maintain for the next game that I make. Getting caught up in the weeds and the details and the wall kicks, that kind of falls under that same umbrella, for me at least, as planning, where you get caught up in the details and you work on these details that you forget the bigger picture. I was on a plane and I wrote up this little game loop. You press the play button, simple marathon mode, random block spawns, and then, you know, stuff happens. And I stuck to that simple loop. That was it. If anything was too too in the weeds, I just avoided it. I skipped it. Another reflection is that doing game development in 3D, everything has some sort of data structure representation. I mean, that's true of any type of programming that I've done at least. There's a grid that stores data, and then the 3D ends up being a representation of that data. I originally tried collision, having blocks fall, and then when it sees another like 3D block in space, it stops. But that was just backfiring and that was messy, and especially for rotations, it just wasn't working. And therefore, I think going forward, having a background representation that then draws itself in the 3D space or represents itself in the 3D space is an approach to, to keep going forward. Another reflection, doing Tetris was a great idea because I know the design really well. I'm good at Tetris. I'm not great, but I think I'm good at Tetris and I know the game. I know how it feels. Yes, I didn't do wall kicks or the T-spins. I knew from the get-go that I wasn't going to be doing T-spins. I wasn't going to worry about it. It's too complex for the goal of the project. It's just to make a game, an imperfect Tetris that can be playable, that, that feels somewhat okay. Another reflection is something that's not new to me, but the importance of files is I did not like how messy the project got out of personal preference, but also organizing your scenes in a hierarchy, in a very good hierarchy is super important because not everything can talk to each other super easily. I also feel like this devlog went well. Uh, the second devlog, I feel like the format felt better. I've already edited the main body of it, and I consider that a reflection in and of itself. <laughs> My first game is officially complete. I told myself Tetris I could do in a month, uh, and there was a part of me that was like, ah, I can't do that in a month. I did it in two and a half weeks. I started it on the 30th, finished on the 15th. So this one involves making assets and involves networking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set a contract for myself, but if I hit a certain number of hours as well, that also meets the contract goal. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully more devlogs to come. Um, definitely for Oink. I've been neglecting Oink with all this Tetris stuff. So I also have to juggle, you know, how am I gonna work on three projects in parallel here? <laughs> and that's only speaking of game projects. I gotta make sure I'm not doing too much. Comment what you thought, would love to hear it. Curious to look back on and see my decisions for things though. So I record it mostly for posterity. That's it, have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you in the next one.